Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lanyel Kuzar and I'm the owner of Yes Event Decor and More. In this video, we are going to continue on in our color combination series. So in my last video, I went really earthy and natural and I did shades of green with pops of white and cream. I absolutely love, love, love how that came out. If you haven't seen it, I'll definitely put a link in the description so you can check that video out. In this video, I'm going to go regal. <laughs> so I'm going to do a royal blue with white and silver. All right, so let's get started. Actually, before we get started, there's a few things that I wanted to share with you guys. So I've been meaning to put notes in all of my videos, but I haven't gotten around to it. Just to let you guys know that I record all my videos in 4K because there's a lot of details that I want you guys to see and I'm not always so close to the camera, all right? So I want you guys to be able to see everything that I do, but I know that YouTube automatically defaults to a lower resolution. So when you're watching my videos, just make sure you adjust the settings if you haven't already. Make sure you adjust the settings to watch it in HD so you can see all the little details in my decorations. Also, I get a lot of questions about pricing, okay? How do you price for this? What do you think the price should be for this? You know, when I do my backdrops, people are asking how much you charge for that. I wanted to let you guys know that next month, so in April, I'm going to be doing another series where I'm talking to you guys about pricing and managing your inventory, and that I'm hoping <laughs> that my storage unit is clear enough and all organized so that I can walk you guys through that, all right? So just know that that's coming up next month. And lastly, I've had a number of you guys reach out to me to have one-on-one -on -one conversations just to go over how to start the business, how to manage the business, any questions or concerns that you guys may have. I wanted to let you guys know that I've just updated my website. I love the idea of being there for you guys and answering your questions and doing these personal consultations. So I have updated my website so that you can go right on there and book my time, okay? So due to the business, <laughs> as you guys know, typically I have events on the weekends or I'm praying that I will start having events on the weekends that will start picking up. And so I do prep. There is some prep that I do during the week. So the only days that I'll be able to do this is Mondays and Tuesdays. But I blocked off Mondays and Tuesdays for you guys so that I can be there for you, for any of you who have questions for me. All right? Now, let's get started. As you can see, I was having a little bit of a hard time putting this backdrop together. So when you first get this backdrop, there's going to be letters on it to tell you which pieces attach to each other. And me being so fast, I just took all those letters off because I thought all the pieces were the same. So now when I'm putting the backdrop stand together, it takes me a little bit of time to figure out what parts go together, all right? So don't be like me. Make sure that you don't remove those letters so you know which parts go together. Now for this theme, I wanted to do balloons. I don't think I've done these royal blue balloons on this channel, so I wanted to give it a go. And I also wanted to use this round backdrop because I have a previous video where I used this and I did some balloon garlands and I get questions on how many balloons did you use? I recorded that video last year and that was during the time where I was just getting used to being on the camera. So I was just decorating and recording and putting a video out there. I wasn't necessarily paying attention to how many balloons I'm using. So we're going to do it over. <laughs> and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how many balloons that I use and exactly how I'm attaching them to the stand. All right. So I have royal blue balloons here and I have them in a bunch of different sizes because royal blue is actually going to be my main color. And then I have some white. All right. And then I'm using silver. Okay. So it's going to be a mix between regular silver and chrome silver. A lot of clients will request that chrome silver color. If you're looking for that, just so you know, balloons online just updated their inventory so it looks like they just got a shipment in so if you're looking to order that color definitely make sure that you go to balloons online and order it and then also if your clients are requesting chrome gold or chrome silver make sure that you're charging extra for that because those colors are more expensive Thank you. 
I wanted to let you guys know that when I'm blowing up my balloons, I try to use different sizes in each of the quads, in each of the colors, okay? But that really depends on what sizes I have available in that color, all right? So in this chrome silver, I only have 11 inch and five inch. So my quads were only 11 inch. But then with my white, I have 18 inch and I have 11 inch. So I did combinations. So some of them I did four 18 inch balloons. Some of them I did four 11 inch balloons. And then some of them I did two 18 inches and two 11 inches. There's really no right or wrong way to do these balloon garlands. But what I've noticed is when I have a bunch of different sizes, it makes the balloon garland so much easier to put together. So now what I'm gonna do is take my 260Q balloon and form my initial balloon garland. Oh, before I get started, I just wanna let you guys know, so blue is going to be my main color in this balloon garland, all right? So when I'm creating my balloon garland, I'm gonna do two quads of blue, one quad of white, one quad of silver. Sometimes I mix it up, so I don't necessarily stay in the same pattern, especially when I get to the bottom of the balloon garland. But for the initial balloon garland, that's the pattern that I'm gonna keep. Okay, so here's where I'm at so far. My hair is probably sticking up <laughs> because of the static. So I added my initial balloon garland to the backdrop stand. I just used 260Q balloons to tie it to the stand, okay? If you don't wanna waste 260Q balloons, then just cut it in half. And I just attached it in three different places. And then I noticed that the bottom wasn't necessarily covering enough of the stand. So I used my extra balloons connected them with a 260Q balloon, and then added those to the bottom. Now here is the hardest part about doing this type of backdrop, is because you have to shape the balloons in a way that look good, all right? So the shape that I have in mind is like an S. <laughs> it's like an S, so we'll see if I execute that here. So now what I'm gonna do is start blowing up more balloons. I'm gonna blow up some nine inch, 11 inch, and my five inch. And then I may just blow up a few of my bigger balloons just to continue filling out the bottom, okay? All right, guys, so I just finished blowing up the balloons that I'm gonna be using to add my final touches. I just wanted to show you guys because I get so many questions on how do I add my final touches. So I blow up my balloons and tie them together to form a duplet, okay? I have two of them. And then I just take my 260Q balloon and tie it around each of these balloons, each set of these balloons. All right, because I get so many questions on that. So as you can see here, this is a set of nine inch balloons. And then this is a set of 11 inch balloons. So where I feel like I need bigger balloons to fill it out, I'm going to use this. But if I feel like I just need to add a final touch somewhere, then I'll add some five inch balloons. All right. Now, ideally, you want your 260Q balloons to be the same color as the balloons that are in the duplets, all right? Especially white, because you don't want this to show, all right, through the balloons. All right, and also I'm gonna be using some of these silver confetti balloons. I must warn you that if these pop, there will be confetti all over the place. So at the end of your event, I don't even pop these. So I just put these right in a garbage bag. But if you wanna pop them, make sure that you put them in a garbage bag and pop them in the garbage bag so you don't have to worry about this confetti being all over the place. 
but there are times where you're setting up these pop and there's nothing you can do about it <laughs> and the confetti goes everywhere all right so now what i'm gonna do is just start adding my final touches and filling this out So here's the backdrop. I love how this came out. And as you could see, it took me some time. It was trial and error to get it in the shape that I like, okay? So I just want to encourage you guys to practice this type of backdrop. It took me some time to get to this point. In my first video, I'll put a link to that. My backdrop didn't look anything like this, okay? So I'm excited because I can see my growth. I encourage you to practice this type of backdrop, okay? Because this one is harder than the rest. Please do not get frustrated or please do not expect that the first time that you do a backdrop like this, that it's gonna come out perfectly because chances are it's not. <laughs> okay, so definitely practice. It helps if you have balloons in different sizes, but if you don't have all the different sizes, you wanna make sure that you have at least three different sizes for your balloon garland, all right? Also, as you can see, I have my new marquee numbers here. I put these on for about five minutes or so, and the light bulbs do get hot very quickly, okay? So always test out your products before you rent them out so you can tell your clients how to use your products, all right? So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend keeping these on for a whole event or for any extended period of time. All right, so if you guys have any questions, please let me know, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank <laughs> you.